northwest Africa. Thousands of square kilometers of dry, barren desert. A small remote archipelago lies off the coast, surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. Seven volcanic islands, each its own world. Equatorial currents merge with the cold waters of the North Atlantic. Plankton rises from the deep, collecting near the ocean surface. Fish and marine mammals from different climate zones meet in the waters of the Canary Islands. Above the water, the trade winds bring life to the islands. They pick up moisture as they cross the ocean, creating conditions for a breathtaking range of flora and fauna. Millions of years ago, the Canary Islands rose from the ocean depths. Marine currents and winds created unique habitats for new species to develop. The Atlantic archipelago became its own little universe. The Canaries contain almost every climate zone, subtropical cloud forests and barren volcanic landscapes, to snow-covered peaks. of the planet, the animals and plants of the islands live life at the limit. Lanzarote is also known as Isla de Fuego y Agua, island of fire and water. Two hundred and eighty years ago, this was the epicenter of a natural disaster that left one of the world's most dramatic volcanic landscapes. The Fire Mountains of Timan Fire. For now, the volcano lies dormant, allowing life to return. Ubara bustards are nomads. Long ago, they came from Africa, where they'd learned to withstand blistering heat and drought. Much like the Sahara Desert in North Africa, the volcanic landscapes of Fuerteventura and Lanzarote are barren and eroded. This rocky desert provides little cover. The only protection for the large birds is camouflage. The Hubara bustards came with the winds. 
Fuerteventura means strong wind. And sure enough, the wind never lets up. Sand whips through the air, dulling the view. The wind is called Kalima, the hot wind from the Sahara. In the Earth's largest desert, vast amounts of sand form mighty dunes. But not all the sand stays here. storms blow it high into the atmosphere, spreading it over thousands of kilometers. Kalima carries the sand out over the Atlantic. Fuerteventura and Lanzarote are the first islands on the journey west. Large amounts of sand land here, creating expanses of desert. Kalima blows many birds here, too. <laughs> Egyptian vultures followed the island's first human inhabitants, the Guanches. These birds are scavengers and profited from humans as long as the humans survived by breeding goats and sheep. But times have changed. The herds of animals have long since vanished. Tourists have taken over. The vultures are now rarely seen. Despite its dry desert climate, Fuerteventura is the island with the largest number of birds. Not all of them are here voluntarily. Birds migrating along the coast of Africa frequently drift out to sea and settle here to recover from their journey. The warm wind from the east meets a cold sea current from the north. The Canary Current. It brings a beautiful yet deadly creature, the Portuguese man of war. Its venomous tentacles make it one of the ocean's deadliest hunters. The poison works quickly and is fatal. A bubble of gas acts as a sail, carrying it over the ocean's surface. The young Pomano fish is immune to the man of war's venom and enjoys the protection of this dangerous hydrozoan. The loggerhead sea turtle has completed a journey of several thousand kilometers. Pilot fish accompany the turtle on its long journey across the Atlantic. In the open sea, any form of cover is welcome. Sometimes swarms of small fish follow in the turtle's wake. This fully grown trigger fish looks lost in the endless blue. He's looking for company. Apparently, however, the sea turtle is not in the market for a new friend.
Then the two put aside their differences and continue the journey together. Large schools of Atlantic spotted dolphins cut through the ocean. The waters of the Canary Islands are rich in fish, and these dolphins are frequent visitors here. They share the seas with many other marine mammals. Bottlenoses are the most familiar of all dolphins. Schools are led by older, experienced males. Bottlenose dolphins communicate via a complex language. For decades, scientists have been trying to decode it, in the hope that one day we shall be able to communicate with them. Marine mammals from both cold and tropical waters meet off the Canaries. Some are just passing through. Others live here all year round. Like dolphins, long-finned pilot whales are mostly ocean nomads. But these make an exception in the straits between Tenerife and La Gomera, where they will spend their entire lives. These whales live in close family communities. Each group is led by an experienced adult, blindly trusted by the others. That's why they're known as pilot whales. Communication is crucial to the whale's existence. They use single sounds to coordinate their movement, while the complex whale songs are crucial to their well-being. There's been no rain on Fuerteventura for four years. This summer is particularly hot and dry, and life is increasingly difficult, even for the Hubara bastards with their desert ancestry. But there is hope. As winter begins, the hot, dry Kalima weakens. The wind turns, bringing rain clouds from the north. This is what the bastards have been waiting for. The first showers approach the coast and reach the parched island. are brief but heavy. The bustard makes the most of the precipitation. The rain means salvation for the parched landscape and its birds. Soon, the desert will be transformed by an abundance of fresh green vegetation. The bustards can afford to be picky, choosing only the most tender fresh shoots.
But perhaps food is not the top priority right now. The rain brings the return of a bizarre spectacle that the males prepare for enthusiastically. Showtime. It's the mating season. Hubara bastards, the Casanovas of the animal world. No gesture is too grand. They'll do absolutely anything to impress the females. demanding and exhausting. The madness can continue for up to six months. The birds with the greatest staying power are most likely to find a mate. reaction is carefully observed. If they're impressed, they will slowly approach. Exit stage left. A quick break, and then the show will go on. Thanks to the rains, the desert is now in bloom. The Canary Island stone chats have mated. In years without rainfall, there's too little food and the birds don't breed. But this is a good year. These small birds are found only in damp gullies called barrancos on Fuerteventura. The parents catch insects in flight and feed them ceaselessly to their young. They never rest. With so much going in at one end, space has to be made at the other. The parents share cleaning duties too. Unlike the males, Female Hubara bustards are shy creatures and avoid drawing attention to themselves. In the wide open volcanic landscape, this caution is the only way to protect their young. They lay their perfectly camouflaged eggs exposed between the rocks. They'll stay on the nest for three weeks, leaving only briefly to find food.
The males, meanwhile, continue their song and dance. Quite a few will eventually die of exhaustion. The females, on the other hand, will produce new life. Danger from the air. Brown-necked ravens. These intelligent predators are on the lookout for an unprotected nest. The female bastard is on high alert. If the ravens discover her nest, they'll destroy her eggs. Winter draws to an end. On the open sea, something is changing. Water from below is rising, bringing a bizarre creature with it. What looks like some form of jellyfish is in fact 60,000 eggs of a deep sea diamond squid. They must develop on the surface. The water is full of plankton, attracting great numbers of fish. They in turn attract birds that have crossed the Atlantic. The Scopoli's shearwaters have spent the winter in South America. They return to the Canary Islands in spring to rear their young. They nest in niches in the steep cliffs. The shearwaters spend the day out at sea, leaving their helpless young behind in the nest. The parents often fly hundreds of kilometers for food. Shoals of fish are not always easy to find. Fortunately, the birds have intelligent allies, dolphins. Rapidly and efficiently, they use echolocation to find their prey. Corralling the fish is almost a game. Now the shearwaters can join in the hunt. Dolphins at shearwaters go in together. looks like a graceful complex ballet but for the sheer waters and their young it's a matter of survival fish populations in the Atlantic are sinking rapidly it's becoming increasingly difficult to find food
hunt was a success, but the birds will only return to their young after dark. Under cover of night, strange-looking predators emerge from their hiding places. An octopus scans the seabed for prey with its tentacles. A butterfly ray spent the day lying in the sand. Angel sharks, too, are nocturnal hunters. From the steep cliffs, ghostly cries ring out over the sea. The shearwaters have finally returned to their breeding holes, navigating in the dark by their sense of smell. Almost every approach ends in a crash landing. Once the birds are back on land, they greet their neighbors. Then it's time to feed their single chick. The young bird has been waiting a long time for this moment. Now there are just a few hours to enjoy family life and get some rest. Once again, the sheer waters prepare to take off. Long before day breaks, the birds are off out to sea. The Northeast trade wind has so many different names, but on the Canary Islands, it's known as Alicio. During its long journey over the Atlantic, Alicio collects a great deal of moisture. Lanzarote and Fuerteventura are too flat. The clouds drift over the volcanic hillocks without difficulty. However, when they encounter Tenerife, La Gomera or La Palma, Great cloud banks mass along the island's steep flanks. They're forced upwards, they cool, and their water condenses, giving life to a unique natural treasure. Subtropical laurel forest.
These ancient forests are found only on the Canary Islands. The mighty laurel trees milk the clouds of their moisture. The water drips from the leaves to the ground. With little actual rainfall, there are waterfalls and streams. Every surface in the forest is damp. Fungi, moss and ferns grow on the trees. The most impressive laurel forest is in the Garajonay National Park on La Gomera. Time seems to stand still here. These forests are living fossils. They have existed since the tertiary era. Over two and a half million years ago, forests like this covered the whole Mediterranean region. When the climate cooled during the Ice Age, those forests disappeared. They survived on the Canary Islands. The forests remain hostage to the trade winds. The ancient flora will vanish if Alizio no longer brings moisture from the Atlantic. These mystical cloud forests should be the perfect place to discover mythical creatures. And they are home to a particularly rare animal. The Bolles pigeon. Very few of these shy birds remain. They prefer to hide in the depths of the cloud forest. Bolly's pigeons are the descendants of European wood pigeons that passed through here long ago. They settled in the forests and never left. On this remote archipelago, the birds developed into a distinct species. Cloud forests are among the most diverse habitats on Earth. Almost all the plants are found only here. This is the only place many of them could survive. These are among the rarest, most endangered plants on Earth. They're extremely sensitive. The smallest change in climate, and they could vanish from the Earth forever. Canary 
Cadena canariensis. The canary bellflower is a relic of the tertiary era too. Large amounts of nectar are produced within its bright calyx. The insects that once pollinated these plants are now extinct. This plant was forced to adapt, and now it's pollinated by birds. The delicate chiffchaff is attracted by the bellflower's nectar. It uses its narrow beak to reach deep into the flower. The chiffchaff has replaced extinct species as this plant's pollinator. The Canary Island foxglove attracts leaf warbler birds. The flower's shape is perfectly adapted to the bird. As the leaf warbler reaches for the nectar, pollen is brushed onto its head. The bird then carries the pollen to the next flower. As soon as the damp, chill Alicio wind loses its force, the feel of Africa returns. The air becomes hazy. The temperatures rise. North of Lanzarote, away from the inhabited islands, there's a small archipelago, Chinijo. It's a handful of bare volcanic rocks in the Atlantic Ocean. Yet this archipelago attracts some very unusual nomads. Eleonora's falcons usually live in Madagascar. But several come to breed on these volcanic rocks devoid of vegetation. To reach the tiny island of Alegranza, falcons cross the Sahara Desert in just three weeks. About 150 breeding pairs settle in the harsh landscape. Eleonora's falcons are social birds and breed in loose colonies. It's the height of the summer, but the falcons have only just begun to brood. Back in the strait between La Gomera and Tenerife, there's no wind and the sea is smooth and calm. Pilot whales relax on the surface. 
now, in August, the family groups gently drift, and their young are born. All the whales in a pod are related, so the males mate with females from other families. Then they return to their own pod to protect their clan. Young whales spend the first four years close to their mothers. When their mother hunts in the depths of the ocean, other relatives keep an eye on the young. Even the males take their turn. This newborn whale is barely a day old. However, not all survive those first few hours. This calf has been dead for several days. The male desperately keeps it afloat, unwilling to give up. Physical contact is important for the whales. It reinforces their family ties and gives the group the strength to endure the many challenges they face in the open seas. Hidden among the ragged cliffs, freshly hatched Eleonora's falcon chicks wait for their parents to return. The adults tirelessly roam the skies looking for food. During breeding season, Eleonora's falcons hunt songbirds out at sea. Smaller birds flying south along the African coast are frequently blown out over the Atlantic by the Kalima. When the exhausted birds finally make it to the Canary Islands, the falcons are waiting. That's why Eleonora's falcons breed so late in the year. They have adjusted their behavior to take advantage of the autumn migration. It's a dangerous strategy. If the migrant birds fail to arrive, 
the young falcons will starve. The chicks remain in the nest for six weeks, while the parents feed and take care of them. The dark volcanic rock can reach more than 40 degrees Celsius at midday. The fragile brood needs not only food, but protection from the burning sun. When the parents are away hunting, shade can make the difference between life and death. This year, many migrant birds were stranded near Alegranza. It's a good season for the falcons. Most of their young will survive. At the end of October, the parents embark on the long flight to their winter quarters in Madagascar. The young birds will follow later, on their own. At just 10 weeks, they have to cover a distance of 10,000 kilometers alone. They leave the rocky outcrops before the winter storms arrive. Next year, they'll return to their islands in the Atlantic. Out of the seas millions of years ago in an inferno of fire and ash, the Canary Islands are now a subtropical paradise. New species, unique behaviors developed here, far from the African mainland. They are the subject of the next episode, World of the Fire Mountain. A remote archipelago lies off the coast of Africa. Islands at the edge of the world, they were once called. They were taken by Spanish conquistadors on their way to America. Today, they attract millions of tourists each year. Human history has certainly left its mark. But the seven islands still have their wild side. deserts. Far from other continents, unique landscapes have developed on the Canaries. 
It all started 20 million years ago. Deep in the Atlantic, something is brewing. Volcanoes erupt on the seabed. The Earth's crust pierces the surface of the sea. The Canaries were born of fire and have yet to settle. island devoid of life. Within months, bacteria invade the naked rock. Algae and lichen follow, green on the black lava. The world of the fire mountains, the visible beginnings of life itself. Mount Taide rises almost 4,000 meters above the sea. It's a sleeping giant. It last erupted in 1909. Innumerable eruptions created one of the world's great natural wonders. Volcanoes, craters, and hardened lava streams merge in a rugged, forbidding landscape. While the islands were a glowing desert of hot mud, the ocean floor teemed with life. But below the surface, too, volcanoes are unstable habitats. Hot gases can escape the earth at any time, poisoning the surrounding water. Immobile life forms meet an untimely end. Ancient creatures continue to inhabit this strange netherworld. Many are bizarre and mysterious. When cold water meets molten lava, the result can be powerful explosions that sink entire coastlines, or complex networks of underwater caves stretching far inland. These caves are home to sea creatures that prefer the dark, Isolated from the outside world, surreal life forms have developed in a submarine cave on Lanzarote. Tiny white crabs, barely a centimeter long, completely blind. Rays have inhabited the seas since ancient times. as have these bizarre angel sharks. Mm. 
As the islands rose from the seabed, these creatures had to adapt to their changed environment. More and more species emerged from the deep. The island of El Hierro rose just one million years ago, making it the archipelago's youngest and smallest island. It was home to an animal whose ancestors came from Africa, but now has one last refuge. Tiny, inaccessible, Roca Chico de Salmor. It's hard to believe any animal could exist here. is the El Hierro giant lizard. Between 150 and 200 of them live on the barren rock. They grow to more than half a meter despite the apparent lack of food. The sparse vegetation shouldn't support so many lizards, and yet these animals even find the energy to reproduce here. Cliffs of La Gomera rise out of the sea like a desert mountain range, dry and hot. At higher elevations, however, the island's appearance changes. Shrouded in deep mist, a living fossil has survived, the Monte Verde Cloud Forest. Laurel trees grow close together, forming an impenetrable thicket. The forests are a remnant of the tertiary era, the last of their kind on the planet. A rare bird inhabits the lower level of the forest where the vegetation is thinner. The laurel pigeon. Like the forest itself, the pigeon is also a living fossil. It arrived from Africa when the canaries were young. Cut off from the mainland for 20 million years, it can only exist in this restricted habitat. Of course, the animal most associated with the islands is the canary. This is its original ancestor, the Atlantic canary. Spanish explorers took the bird to Europe for its beautiful song and as a symbol of luxury and sophistication. Canaries like sweet things. They were once known as sugar birds. Today's canaries are still drawn to the ripe fruit of the arbutus tree.
The fruit they drop is left behind for others. For example, the common chaffinch. You can't be too selective on an island surrounded by the ocean. Resources are scarce. You just have to adapt. From afar, it looks like a lush green paradise. But the area around El Taide is a barren volcanic desert. Freezing cold, blistering heat, thin dry air, and powerful ultraviolet rays are the lot of this volcano. The Mount Taide Bugloss can withstand the difficult conditions, growing a tower of red blossom three meters high. But it only manages this once in its life. The more flowers, the higher its chance of being pollinated by passing insects. All its energy focused on this one hope of creating the next generation. from the mainland, different species developed with very specific abilities. outcrop on Tenerife lives one of the most endangered plants on earth. Lotus maculatus. There are just 11 left in the world. into a unique partnership to survive with a reptile. The lizards feed on the plant's blossoms. The sweet nectar of the Lotus Maculatus is especially tasty. The secret of the plant's survival? Its pollen is located on the tip of the blossoms. When the lizard stretches for the nectar, pollen is brushed onto its head. The lizard then moves on to the next plant and pollinates it. Without the lizards, Lotus maculatus couldn't reproduce. It would vanish forever. Life on the Canary Islands is dominated by lava and ash. At the foot of the volcanoes is neither water nor fertile earth. And yet, a tough fighter survives, the Canary Islands Pine. 
This tree uses a strong taproot to anchor itself to the ground. Additional roots spread out in a wide network to gather nutrients from a broad area. Because the root systems are so expansive, there's plenty of space between the trees. The sparse pine forests around Mount Taida are home to a bird whose origins remain shrouded in mystery. The Tenerife blue chaffinch. The plumage of the males is a striking shade of blue. The chaffinches prefer mountainous regions, building their nests in the largest, oldest pines. And they're not the only birds here. These sparse forests are also inhabited by African blue tits and woodpeckers. This young blue tit can already fly, but it still depends on its parents for food. The chaffinches, on the other hand, will breed later in the year. These females still have time for minor disputes. Finally, the moment arrives. Pine cone season. The seeds of the pine trees are rich in protein. The chaffinches have matched their breeding season to the life cycle of the trees. In summer, ripe cones fall to the ground. It's easy for the birds to get to the nourishing seeds. This is the perfect time to rear their young. At heights of 2,000 meters and more, giant Canary Island pines withstand cold, heat, and drought. But living in a volcanic neighborhood can be extremely dangerous. Glowing lava ignites whatever it touches. Volcanic eruptions destroy everything in their path. Fires spread unhindered, scarring the landscape. Once the fire has run its course, the full extent of the destruction becomes apparent. The Canary Island pines are the only life left standing. Their bark protected the sensitive pith. The secret of their survival lies in their needles that burn up fast and then extinguish. The flames have nothing to hold on to in the sparse forest and pass on. Fire brings new colors to the forest. For some plants, fire is a source of life, not death. The ashes leave minerals in the soil that help the plants to germinate.
In summer, the cooler, damper Alisio trade wind reaches the northern side of the island. The steep slopes block its progress. Rising air cools and condenses. Thick clouds flow into the parched forests. In places, magical forests have sprung up, a far cry from the arid volcanic desert. Life in here is determined by the clouds. The mist helps lichen, ferns and moss grow on the trees. Here, the pine needles guarantee the existence of an evergreen paradise. The long, thin needles comb the clouds, creating water drops that fall directly onto the roots. On Fuerteventura, there are no mountain forests to be watered by the trade winds. Life here must withstand heat and drought. The cream-colored courser prefers running to flying. This graceful bird scans its surroundings for danger in an upright position, stretching its neck as high as it can. With its sand-colored plumage, it's almost invisible in the rocky scree. These birds lay their eggs in open terrain. The mother's soft plumage is their only protection in the harsh, stony desert. Cream-colored coursers are shy, quiet birds. But mothers encourage their unborn chicks with delicate, high-pitched calls. Soon, the offspring will reply. But first, they must survive the most perilous period. <laughs> Brown-necked ravens settle on an old volcanic cone. There's little to hunt in this landscape, but during the breeding season, the ravens target eggs and helpless chicks. The stone curlew does everything slowly to avoid drawing attention to itself.
the brown-necked ravens continue to patrol the skies. When the Corsa feels threatened, it hunkers down, relying on its natural camouflage. Brooding mothers only move at the last possible moment to draw the ravens away from their eggs. But ravens are intelligent birds. They spot the slightest change in the surrounding landscape. Birds' eggs are easy prey. This time, the mother wasn't careful enough. She must watch as her brood is destroyed. For the others, the struggle for survival continues. This female is more fortunate. Her eggs have remained undiscovered so far. After three long weeks, the eggs will soon hatch. A storm has gathered in the North Atlantic. Now it sweeps the islands. Hurricanes whip the water into a frenzy. Temperatures drop below zero. A blizzard follows. Unheard of weather for the Canaries. The snow falls for days. Masses of cold air collide with the flanks of the high volcanoes. The fire mountains become a sea of white. Lower down, water cascades from the heights. The forest that usually survives on moisture from the clouds soaks up the excess water like a sponge. The colorful blossoms of the canary shrub mallow are bright spots in the monotonous green of the winter forest. There's a reason the plant has picked the winter to bloom. Its blossom attracts migrant birds.
these plants have adapted to the pollinating birds. The chiffchaff is after the sweet nectar. As it reaches in, its head touches the plant's stamens, shaking the pollen loose, which it transfers to the next blossom. After days, the storm finally moves on. Temperatures rise rapidly. The snow will soon vanish, but for a while, El Taida shows a very unfamiliar face. On Fuerteventura, too, the storm is over. The first cream-colored courser has hatched from its egg, wet, blind, and completely helpless. This young bird can't survive without its mother's warmth. But it'll have to leave the nest in just a few hours. The mother must now pay close attention to the brood. The second chick will hatch at any moment. These stone curlews hatched at dawn. They're still a little unsteady. Their only protection is the camouflage of their mottled plumage. A raven is particularly keen on freshly hatched chicks. It's watching for telltale movements. Meanwhile, the coarser chick's feathers have dried. The young bird is determined to explore its surroundings. The parents are now especially attentive, surveying the landscape. The second chick emerges from its egg. This is a critical moment. The mother immediately removes the bright eggshell. It mustn't attract the attention of the raven. It's early morning, and the stone curlews begin to coax their young out of the nest. They're barely able to stand, but it's time to explore. Step by unsteady step, the freshly hatched chicks make their way over the stony ground.
With one just four hours old, the Corsa chicks are also starting on their first journey. Using food as a lure, the parents lead their young as far from the nest as possible. It'll be four long weeks before they can fly and the greatest danger will have passed. The erosion of wind and weather has smoothed the summits of the volcanoes. But Mount Taide, rising 7,500 meters from the seabed, is a spectacular sight. El Taide, the third highest island volcano in the world, it'll continue to grow as long as it stays active beneath the surface. Between the islands, there are deep underwater canyons. Conditions here are ideal for the great marine mammals. Pilot whales are nomads. They cross the world's oceans in family groups. is led by a dominant male. His knowledge and experience decide the fate of his relatives. Some pilot whales have got used to the perfect conditions between the islands and stay here permanently. the seas in search of rich fishing areas, constantly communicating with each other. As befits a sophisticated society, pilot whales are also always in contact. Each family has its own dialect that it uses to coordinate its movements over great distances. have developed an extremely sensitive sonar system to detect prey. Although the whales spend much of their time on the surface, they mainly hunt large deep sea squid. They can pinpoint their prey's location with great accuracy, even 800 to 1,000 meters below the surface. together closely. 
Once they vanish into the depths, their survival depends on their relatives. Shrieking gulls circled the Roque Chico de Samor. They breed in a large colony on this sheer rock rising out of the sea. The chicks hide, only showing themselves when the parents arrive with fresh food. The gull colony is a godsend for the El Hierro giant lizard. Without the gulls, the lizards would starve on the barren rock. The chicks are clumsy and vulnerable. The hungry lizards observe them from close by. Every minute, more adult gulls take off from the rock and fly away. Their destination? The high plateau on El Hierro, the mainland to this tiny rock. The plateau is home to a swarm of grasshoppers. Since biblical times, these Moroccan locusts have been considered a plague, but they're a blessing for the gulls that can simply grab them in their beaks. Great feast lasts a month, long enough to rear their young on nutritious insect protein. The gulls make their return journey laden with fresh food. An ornithological airlift ensures the chicks on the rock never go hungry. There are more grasshoppers than the chicks could possibly consume. Occasionally they'll have to wait. while the adult tries to bring up the remains of its prey. This is the moment the lizards have been waiting for. They eat whatever the gulls have left behind. There's more than enough insects to go round in this breeding season.
excess protein helps the lizards see out the rest of the year and even breed. It's the secret of their survival. Roque de Salmor gives them shelter. The breeding gulls do the rest. The Canary Islands are a small, fascinating world with an amazing range of climates, landscapes, and unique species. Animals and plants have entered into unusual partnerships on these remote islands. Life forms that have long disappeared elsewhere survive on the Canaries. The entire archipelago is a confined world where one aspect of life depends on another. But if just one element fails, the entire system could collapse. If that were to happen, the Canary Islands would return to what they were millions of years ago, a barren volcanic desert. Thank you.